Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Ben TV. It is your uh, daily news. I don't know what we're calling it these days, to be honest with you. But if you looked in the chat, it's kicking off big time today. Um, wild chat to start. Um, we've got loads of news stories for you today, actually. Um, quite a lot of rubbish if I'm being frank, uh, and some really interesting stories as well. So obviously we're going to lead with uh, PSG want Luis Diaz. We'll talk a little bit about uh, T and Coop Miners as well. The apparent unrest at Liverpool. Uh, three players Hughes will need to replace. Uh, also a, a potential signing from Richard Hughes' past. Uh, also, Zabi Alonso, obviously. But good news in this regard. Um coming out of Italy uh, in Liverpool's pursuit of Zabi Alonso and a little bit of an injury update for you as well because why not um, so I'm going to start off uh, with Hadrian Grenier give me your thoughts on the uh, of course on, on each of these topics as we go through them now Hadrian Grenier has uh, a lot of followers uh, 270,000 circa 270,000 followers uh, you can see his tweet 269.8 thousand followers he is let me just read the French there Patash Tuts Lecris Silla PSG and Tom Friel. Okay, he's, uh, he, he is basically a content creator who provides news around PSG. That makes that's what that says um, because I read it in English before. <laughs> um, so Qatar's priority to strengthen PSG's attack is Louis Diaz. Contact has even been made with his agent, considered a player with an impeccable state of mind who also knows how to defend. He ticks as many boxes as possible. Not all of them, but as many as possible. However, the idea is not unanimous internally. Louis Campo, for example, is not thrilled. He favours younger players with greater room for improvement. Also, for the moment, Liverpool don't want to sell him. So that's interesting, isn't it? Um, it is. I find this an interesting story because, um, obviously, Louis Diaz is a really top draw football player I absolutely love Louis Diaz I'm going to say that to start with and you can feel there's a book coming and there might be a book coming um, but there's probably not going to be a book coming um, but you never know do you um, I think for me it comes down to risk reward this now Obviously, 100 million quid, which is what we're being rumoured, a uh, potential fee for, for Luis Diaz is a lot of money. But what we have is a very good, very well integrated footballer at Liverpool right now who plays on the left hand side, which obviously there's competition for places and stuff like that. But, told you, um, one who doesn't probably get as many goals or assists as you would like from one of those three forward positions. But, again, it is a big risk if you sell Luis Diaz because you're probably going to, to replace him, you're probably going to have to spend all of that £100 million. And as we know, historically, 50% um, of transfers work out and 50% of transfers don't work out. So, would you, if you were in charge of Liverpool Football Club and you, Michael Edwards, you were Richard Hughes, you were the next manager, get rid of a player who is guaranteed a very, 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 very good footballer to go in with a 50% chance on an improvement and your improvement might be five or six goals a season? Maybe. Maybe it's a touch more. Might be 10 goal involvements. That's a big old risk, isn't it? Now, in football manager terms... It's probably one that I would take. In real life terms, would I? I'm not so sure, you know. I'm not so sure. I'd be interested to see what everybody else thinks, but like that's a, that's a big old risk for me. Um, now, obviously, there's rumours of Kylian Mbappe, as there always is, moving on. Um, I'm sure there'll be people in the chat right now, I'm looking at you, and I know you're typing this, just swap him for Kylian Mbappe. I'm sure there's going to be something there. Uh, and if it was just the straight swap for Kylian Mbappe, in football manager terms, I'm there. In real life, I'm probably there. Is it going to be on the table? Probably not. Because PSG will probably want to make some money because Kylian Mbappe could move for 200 or 250. He could set the transfer record, couldn't he? He really could. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think in real life, I think you've got to keep Luis Diaz. Equally, you know, you've got a lad there in Diogo Jota who can score probably more goals from that left-hand side. You've got a lad there in Cody Gakpo who hasn't been at his best, I don't think it's uh, unfair to say, this season, but can play on the left-hand side. It's where he was uh, before Liverpool signed him. We've probably dicked around with him a little bit too much in terms of 
his positions. It's had a negative impact probably on his Liverpool career so far. You could see a big improvement, a big jump in his stats uh, if he was to play consistently on that left-hand side in place of someone like a Louis Diaz. You might be able to use the 100 million elsewhere on your side, but fancy that Liverpool kind of like having five really, really good footballers and all score goals and assists. Obviously, we know that Mo Salah, we know that Darwin Nunes, we know that Cody Gakpo, we know that Louis Diaz and we know that Diogo Jota have all got over 10 goals so far this season. I don't think I'm missing anybody. Um, we think probably that maybe Dom Sobel's eyes got 10 in him as well um, over the course of a season, if he has a full season. So maybe we're looking at that. But yeah, I, I think what I'm trying to say is that the floor of Louis Diaz is very high, but can you improve on his ceiling? I think you can probably improve on his ceiling. Is it a risk I'm willing to take? Probably not. Not if I was in a real life job. Um Pleur says uh, Louis Diaz is a superb squad member on those wages. He's unsellable. Oh, look at that. That's high up, Aaron. Uh, that's brilliant, mate. I like that. Um, sell Diaz, give Gakpo the left and reinvest. You, can you see how high this is, Aaron? <laughs> brilliant. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you do it live on screen. Diaz is on a low wage. Oh, we're getting down a little bit here. Diaz gives him all. Gives his all. I'm in the keep box. This is class. Uh, no for me. If we had to look around. Oh, boo, Aaron. Uh, if we had to look around, it would still be the answer for me, says Luke. Um, yeah, Mr. J Mango talking about his wages. Diaz is on around 70 grand a week, I heard, which is absurdly low. For what we're paying him, it is actually, you're right, it is pretty low for, for what we actually pay him. Um, it, is, it is very much an interesting topic, though. Um, Chris is being harsh today says Nigel why am I being harsh mate I don't think I'm being harsh uh, Sinton Damon says uh, sell him and invest the money in a proper winger that has end product Gakpo and Darwin are left wingers and they came to us so we are covered oh interesting um, da, 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 I was being harsh um, um, and then we've got JD who just says sell Aaron no we're not selling Aaron we're just tied him down to a long term contract Um Simon from Stoke, I wonder where he's from, says Diaz is not somebody you can rely on to score goals. Sell. Wow. Um, Craig Flynn just says give Diaz a new contract uh, and a higher wage, uh, which is actually that one there. Um, JMO Chandler says no end product for the right price. Let him go. Okay, so that felt like a 50 50 split. Aaron, can we put a poll in? Do you mind, mate? Would you sell? Louis Diaz for a hundred million, yes or no? Because that felt in the comments section right there like a 50-50 split. For what it's worth, I am very much a no. Um, I would keep him um, because I think it's a big old risk selling someone like a Louis Diaz. Also, 27 years old, you know, he sh he's in the prime of his career. It should be said, I think, for anybody who's who's, who's typing into the poll now or, or, or logging their votes or whatever, are we going to see a big jump and a big improvement for Louis Diaz now? <sighs> Not a big jump. I think you can get an improvement, certainly, but I don't think we're going to get a, a, a huge jump in improvement. Um, so, yeah, it is an interesting one, and it also annoys me that someone like a PSG wants him because that's like, hang on a minute, why do you want him? Do you know something we don't know? He's our player. How do you know something we don't know? Don't know. Uh, I'll come back to the poll in a minute. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, Man United stunned as Liverpool emerge as favourites for classy goal scorer midfield out with a new price tag revealed. Uh, the keen of eyes will have noticed that it's Teon Koopmeiners, and I don't know how to say his name, so apologies, at At Atalanta attacker midfielder. Um, we know that Jürgen actually completely revamped his midfield last time around, didn't he? Um, so this one for me is a bit of an interesting one again, and I'm going to file this under, not sure this one's going to happen, um, lads and ladies, because, you know, He's obviously an eight. He's got 10 goals, I think, and three assists in 25 games in Serie A so far this season. Um, clearly, that's a very good output in a league that's very difficult to score in as well, historically, anyway. Um, for me, you've got Dom Soberslai, you've got Alexi McAllister as the eights right now, you've got Kurt Jones, you've got Harvey Elliott, you've got a potential Cody Gakpo. Do you need to spend big money on another midfielder? I'm not sure, you know. And, and again... This is all pie in the sky because 
we don't have a we don't have a manager so how uh, like what happens and, and we don't have a sporting director and we don't have someone sitting above them called michael edwards yet um because obviously they're all going to be starting at the end of the season so without a manager without the guy who's in charge of football operations and without the sporting director how do you know that liverpool are going to be signing a midfielder i mean it it just seems a bit wild to me and, and, and you know it's transfers and that's what this is and, and, and stuff like that but yeah I can't I can't see that this is going to happen at all but according to Italian outlet Corriere dello Sport Liverpool have set their sights on selling Coop Miners this summer and are first and foremost in the race for his signature a versatile player Coop Miners has the ability to play as defensive central and attacking midfielder so he could provide cover in multiple positions 26 year old valued at 34 million uh, but following impressive performances and the interest of several top sides they've decided to increase his price tag to around 43 million pounds it's actually a very good price and I think when you look at his stats here on FB Ref, uh, you can see he's in the top one percentile versus midfielders uh, over the last 365 days for non-penalty goals. He ranks very highly in his expected assisted goals and his non-penalty expected goals uh, plus expected assisted goals, shot creating actions, progressive passes received, ranks very highly. Defensive stuff, not very good. Not very good at all. Aaron, I'm just going to try and change my NDI over, which is something I've never done live on a stream before. Um, can you give us a shout through the wall whether we've got this? Because I wanted to show something on Google Chrome instead. Yeah. Right. I just wanted to compare him to Dominic Soberslai versus, well, yeah, as I mentioned, T and Coop Miners. And you can see, if I just scroll down slightly, you can see the whole thing. Now, the blue uh, radar is Soberslai. The red radar is Coop Miners. Very similar profile of player, I would suggest. Better in the aerial duels, probably that's it, as Dominic Soberslai. So I take you back to my point before. Why would you sign this guy for £43 million? And also... I completely forgot Ryan Gravenberg when I was talking about the midfielder options. I just don't see that Liverpool are in for a midfielder. And if they are in for a midfielder, could it be the future of the sixth position? Or is there a lot of trust there in someone like a Stefan Bacetic to come in and take that? Or, you know, new manager might want to look at Trent Alexander-Arnold in that position as well. Like, if he's an eight, Dom Sobers, like Kurt Jones, Harvey Elliott, Alexi McAllister, Ryan Gravenberg, Tane Coop Manners. Six players for two positions? No. And that's if and if we say that play the same way. You know, we might go into some kind of three four three formation and you actually might lose an eight. Um you never you just don't know. And it comes back to it. We shouldn't really believe any of these things until we've got a manager in place and a sporting director and Michael Edwards in situ. Uh, but I did think it was interesting regardless to to just talk about it because you just never know what's going to happen uh, over the next few months. And these transfer rumours are going to start to ramp up and stuff like that as well, aren't they? So, um, Aaron, do we have the results of our poll? 68% of you would sell Louis Diaz for £100 million. Therefore, fast maths, 32% of you have decided to keep him. Uh, add, that, add another one, 32.1%, uh, because I'm in there as well. Um, yeah, I'm at that, like... Um, Knocky knock, talking about the number six thing. The way Endo is playing, he'll be a number six even in his 40s. He's playing very, very well, isn't he? That's what it comes down to. Um, John Somers asks, Chris, how many players do you think we need in the summer? Okay. I will answer that, John, but it'll just be a little bit later on in the show because we, we've got a section that leads perfectly into that question. Um so yeah, I want to I want to talk about the apparent unrest at Liverpool. Nunes and Sobers like fuming, fuming apparently over the Klopp exit. Um, now this is footballtransfers.com. Uh, Liverpool stars Darwin Nunes and Dominic Sobers like are furious with the manner in which Jurgen Klopp's exit from the Anfield club has been handled by the board. The pair feel that they have been misled by the Reds. Um, Klopp announced in January would stand down from his role as a pool manager decision in football transfers reveal back in August the gem was seriously mulling over so this story is an interesting one sorry I've got a phone call I'm to sack that off no nope, sorry not today um, yeah basically this story is an interesting one they're saying um, that 
some senior players at Anfield, contrary to previous reports, did know about the potential exit of Jurgen Klopp uh, on the Singapore tour in the summer. If that was the case, I'd understand Dom Sobersly, Endo, Ryan Gravenberg, all to be fuming. Nunes was there. Nunes was a senior player. Maybe he's not in the leadership group, but you'd, they'd have to talk about it, surely. Surely Nunes would know if there was an inkling from the players that, that Jürgen Klopp was going to step down at the end of the season. Feels like his name might have just been thrown in there. I would understand it if Sobersly feels misled or if Gravenberg feels misled and his name was mentioned in that as well. Um, but then it does also go on later to say, Nunes and Sobersly do not have plans to talk to their agents and review their position with the Reds, where there is still no clear succession plan for Klopp. Both remain content to stay with the club for now. I mean, like, are they annoyed? but not annoyed enough to do anything about it. They must love playing at Liverpool. Dom Sobers, I certainly does. Darwin Nunes absolutely should do, and it looks like he does to me as well. Gravenberg has had more game time this season than previous year, so I'm sure he feels probably quite content at the moment, although it maybe hasn't worked out exactly as he wanted it to work out. This feels a little bit, oh God, it's the international break. Uh, let's just type some words. Don't know what you guys think. Um, yeah, well, I know what Blue, Blue, Blue thinks. Can you imagine that is a real story? Um, and yeah, Dom um, says Mihaly, uh, Dom love Liverpool. I think he does. Uh, and Craig Flynn just says, yeah, that, that, that's, that's bullshit in my opinion. And I agree with you. I think that's bullshit as well. So we move on then. Uh, Liverpool will lose a, a, a trio uh, and Richard Hughes will have to replace them, uh, according to Give Me Sport. Now, that trio I can exclusively reveal via the medium of YouTube. Is Thiago Matip and Adjun? Yeah, we know. Um, and, and it's not necessarily the case that Matip will um, definitely leave, because there was rumours of Liverpool doing right by him when he picked up that injury. Certainly, I think the best case for Liverpool, to be frank, is I think we just let him use the training facilities to get free, fit. And then he leaves when he wants to leave. If he can prove that he deserves a contract while he's getting fit, sounds. Um, but I wouldn't personally be giving him a new contract, although I absolutely adore him. Um, Thiago is almost certainly going to go uh, and Adrian is either going to sign a one-year contract again or he's going to leave. Now, if Adrian does leave, he is the one of those three players that I would expect a signing for because obviously there's question marks over Keller's future as well whether it's time for him to move on and find pastures new to get a, 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 you know to be the number one somewhere I think he's proved this season uh, with his appearances for Liverpool uh, that he's good enough to be a number one somewhere um, and at his age maybe it's time for him to move on Thiago I'm not 100% sure whether we need to replace to be honest with you because obviously we've got Stefan Bacetic the emergence of James McConnell Bobby Clark um, uh, yeah and Th those players would suggest to me that we're probably covered in the midfield positions. Uh, Centre-back, I certainly feel like we'll need to sign somebody. Obviously, you, if Matip doesn't stick around, you've got Jarrell Kwanzaa, you've got Ibu Kanata, you've got Virgil van Dijk, and you've got the option of Joe Gomez being in there, which brings me on to the next story, uh, and that is that Liverpool could make a third attempt to sign a player after extensive Richard Hughes scouting. Now, that player... He's out of contract at the end of the 23-24 season. His name's Roy Kelly. Liverpool tried to sign him back in 2019 uh, to back up Andy Robertson. And then again in 2020, he was on the shortlist when we signed uh, Kostas Timikas. Uh, he's obviously a left-sided centre-half and he can play the left-back. Now, if you remember back to the summer, when we changed the formation at the back end of the last season, all we were really talking about is, do we have that profile player in the football club? Roy Kelly could be somebody... Uh, obviously, Tottenham wanted him uh, last summer. I think they made a bit of £20 million. Uh, he hasn't renewed his contract. He looks like he's going to just walk out the door in Bosman at the end of this season. Could Liverpool, using the Bournemouth connections and using Richard Hughes, knowing that his contract is out at the end of the summer, speak to him, um, probably got his phone number, and say, listen, Liverpool, maybe, would you? 25 years old now. It's not unusual for Liverpool to go back in for players that they've scouted previously. We will have scouted him in 2019, back when Michael Edwards was our sporting director. Richard Hughes actually had him at the football club at Bournemouth, so understands how good a player he is as well. Uh, the fact that Michael Edwards tried to sign him again in 2020 suggests there was a long-term interest there. Um, so, could he add to Jarrell Quante, Ibu Kanate, Virgil van Dijk and make a, a, a solid 
option for us and, and you know with Joe Gomez being in and around Mr Mr James Milner uh, version 2.0 and um, make it five sorts of centre backs that you can really use this one I know I've just sort of spent 10 minutes saying like you can't really think about you know uh, potential signings and stuff this one makes sense though doesn't it because it, there's no risk but there's a big reward on the end of it because you've someone coming in on a free gets to fight for his place also fills a need I think in a, a, a like a left sided centre half left back in the new formation but but again, is this the formation that we're going to be playing moving forward? If someone like a Zabi Alonso came in, will we stick to it? If somebody like a, a, a Ruben Amarim came in, will we stick to this formation? We don't know. So we're still filing away in. Very interesting. Business that could get done, but also dependent on who the manager is and what their style of play is and formation and what type of lads they feel Liverpool squad needs to kick on even further than it has done under Jurgen Klopp. Um, so four huge tasks, according to Liverpool Echo, awaiting Richard Hughes as sporting director. I'm just scroll down and find out number one. Hire a new first team manager. Yep. I think we could all agree that one of his first tasks is hiring a new manager. But if you believe that he's going to walk in at the end of the season and then start looking at a new manager, then you need your head testing, quite honestly. Um, this is well underway right now. These guys will be talking, whether they're in the football club or they're not in the football club. It's big business and it's worth a lot of money and it's an important decision. They're not going to walk through the door on the 1st of June or whenever it is and then just go, right, OK who's available it's not going to happen uh, hire new backroom staff right now Liverpool's backroom staff are all leaving um, yep yeah, understand that I kind of feel though that nowadays the backroom staff tend to move with the manager so if you hire the manager the backroom staff should look after itself maybe you can make an addition or two to that backroom staff but I feel like it is an important job but it will be covered by when you hire a manager uh, job number three: negotiate new player contracts. This is a this is a big one because Salah, Van Dijk, and Trent Alexander are ordered in the last eighteen months. Their contracts run out at the end of next season. You do not want to be heading into next season with them on a one year deal. You need to tie up Mo Salah, whether the plan is to sell him in a couple of years' time or not, because you need to get value for Mo Salah. You can't let him walk out the door. Um, so yeah, and he deserves a new contract because he's an outstanding footballer, one of the best that we've ever seen wear red. Um, and obviously, Trent Alexander-Arnold, you need to renew him. Virgil van Dijk's the captain of the football club. I think that one should be an easy renew, even at his age, by the way. Um, but they are three massive tasks. And we did this on a deep dive, me and uh, Josh Williams, on Tuesday. Um, so if you want to watch that, we did it in full depth and detail on deep dive. One of my favourite shows of the week. Uh, nay, my favourite show of the week. Um, and they're the three big jobs. Moving on then. Liverpool have received a boost in the pursuit of top manager and gorgeous all-round bloke, Zabi Alonso. So this is a really interesting one, actually. I don't know if it's true, but I like to talk about it. Liverpool get encouragement to appoint Alonso. Uh, German giants by Munich, who are also targeting Alonso, have now shifted their focus onto Italian manager Antonio Conte. The Bavarians want Antonio Conte, according to Italian publication La Repubblica. Okay, okay, okay. Let's talk Xavi Alonso. Let's talk why the hell are Bayern Munich looking after Antonio Conte? Could it be that he wins trophies? Probably. Are there two more different managers or two managers at polar opposite ends of the spectrum right now than Antonio Conte and Xavi Alonso? Probably not. Maybe Diego Simeone to Xavi Alonso because this is a ball dominant um, new school manager in Xavi Alonso with an incredible playing career versus an old Italian defensive minded coach. I just, it batters my head to be quite honest with you, that they are looking at both of those two managers. Now, I totally get it. He has won trophies and look, Bayern Munich are looking unlikely to win uh, the Bundesliga this season because of Zambi Zabi Alonso. But to go back to Antonio Conte, now if, obviously if, by Leverkusen do lose their manager then maybe they don't they're not as good next season and maybe they have a free run at the title but when you want something big in Europe as well it seems mad I'm all for it by the way you can have him um, if that means we have a free run sometimes these types of things if there's any truth to it are probably more around 
shit, we're actually not in pole position. We need to save a little bit of face here. Oh, we don't really want him. We'll go for Antonio Conte because you lost out to Liverpool. <laughs> Get in. Um, <coughs> yeah, so I'm interesting regardless. Uh, and final story of the day, injuries and possible return dates, and we'll get back into the comments after that. Um, so, with Jürgen Klopp, we're keeping a close eye on his international stars during the break. Fingers and toes crossed. And legs, by the way. Liverpool boss could be close. So much needed triple injury boost. I like it. I like it. I like it. Louis Diaz, Darwin Nunes, Cody Gakpo. As if the defeat to Manchester United wasn't bad enough on Sunday, Klopp dropped another potential bombshell or rather three. Diaz, Nunes, Gakpo all picked up issues. But the indications are that the issues for all three are just minor and they should hopefully return unscathed. 31st of March versus Brighton. I'll take that. Ibu Kanate. 31st of March versus Brighton. I will take that. Alexander Arnold, Diogo Jota, and Kerr Jones. Well, Kerr Jones, potentially 31st of March versus Brighton. I'll take that. April 7th versus Manchester United. Trent Alexander Arnold and Diogo Jota. Oh, yeah. I didn't think we'd see Diogo Jota this soon, to be honest with you. So I'm pretty pleased about that one. And if we can get Trent in anyway into Manchester United, sound, I'm all for it. Alisson Becker, unknown. Bacetic, unknown. Alcantara, Matip, and Doak out for the end of this, until the end of the season. There you go. Uh, the question from, was it John Somers? Somers um, was, who do you think Liverpool needs to sign? Where do we need to strengthen? Okay, early guesses, of course. I'll start at the back and I'll work my way forward. I think Liverpool need to have a conversation with Cleveland Kelleher. I don't know whether Cleveland Kelleher is going to be happy to be a number two after getting quite a lot of football so far this season. Therefore, I think Liverpool might need to sign a backup goalkeeper because I think that Cleveland Kelleher will move on. I think for very good money, I think round about 40 billion quid if we were to get a bit for that, I think it would be too big, a, uh, too big an amount of money to turn down for a backup goalkeeper. Even if it was 20 or 30, it's a huge amount of money to turn down for a backup goalkeeper that could be used somewhere else. Will we be weaker for it? Yes, I do think we will be, but I think that might be one piece of business. I do think Liverpool need to sign a centre-half, obviously to replace Joel Matip, potentially too, because the gap between Kwanzaa and the next level is is quite large. Um, so yeah, I think definitely one, potentially two centre-halves. If one of those can play left-back as well, a la Louis Kelly, then I think that would be a smart piece of business, especially if you're bringing him on a free. That would give you funds then to sign another centre-half as well. Obviously, we've got injury concerns over Ibu uh, as always. So I think that needs to be done. I think right-back are absolutely fine with Trent Alexander-Arnold and Connor Bradley, of course. I think left back with Robertson, with Costas Timakas, and with Joe Gomez as potential options, I think we're absolutely fine. I think Gomez can be thrown into the right back option as well. Uh, but can you get an upgrade? I'm not sure you can get an upgrade on Andy Robertson right now, but maybe for the future you could do. Um, DM, I would probably trust that Liverpool will go into it next season with Endo Bacetic and then McAllister is potentially the number three and McConnell maybe the number four so I think we're stocked there the number eight I think we're stocked the right hand side of the front three Mo Salah I think he he has to have a backup at some point um, so a versatile forward player might be something that Liverpool look at. Darwin Nunes, I think, isn't going anywhere. He's proved this season that he's been able to hit those levels that we needed from him. Um, so I expect him to lead the line next season. Left-hand side, I think, was stocked. So, backup goalkeeper, maybe two centre-halves. Uh, and a forward player to make it six for three rather than five for three. Don't know where Ben Doak is in his development, but maybe you want to put your own stamp on it if you are somebody else. But again, this is if Liverpool play the way that we're playing right now. Um, we might not. Zabi Alonso might come in and just go, <laughs> okay, here's Grimaldo, here's Vert Sounds. Just plug them into the squad. We'll make two. And I'll be absolutely fine with that, by the way, as well. Uh, so there you go. That has been the, uh, whatever we call on this show nowadays, fan interactive show, maybe, daily news show. Who knows? Uh, thank you to everybody who has joined me so far for this one. Uh, appreciate you. Um, I think you've all been a little bit harsh on Louis Diaz, if I'm honest. Um and Craig, thanks again for the nice comment. Thanks again, Chris. Great to as always. Up the red, you'll never walk alone. I will see you next time. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to Redmen TV on YouTube. And if you're so inclined, come and give us a follow on Redmen Plus as well. You will not regret it. Some of our best content is on there.
Thank you so very, very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Uh, the season is now well underway. If you need extra Red Men content, be it podcasts, videos, documentaries, interviews, and general shows, fill your boots on redmenplus.com today.